सो हे गाइज वी आर बैक विद यट अनदर वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक आउट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रोसेस विच इज पार्ट ऑफ रैक विच इज यू नो रिट्रीवल पार्ट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो पर्टिकुलरली वी विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन रिट्रीवल बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम द सर्च रिजल्ट विच वी गेट वाइल रिट्रीविंग फ्रॉम द क्वेरी आर नॉट अ गुड एंड दैट्स द रीजन वी आर नॉट एबल टू गेट अ गुड समरी फ्रॉम द मॉडल सो इंस्टेड ऑफ फोकसिंग ऑन हाउ टू इम्प्रूव आर मॉडल टू प्रोड्यूस अ बेटर समरी मे बी वी कैन फोकस ऑन हाउ टू इम्प्रूव द रिट्रीवल एंड इन द सेकेंड पार्ट वी कैन फोकस ऑन द समराइजेशन इशू सो या इन दिस वीडियो वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वन ऑफ द मेजर things that are that is happening in the current track thing that people are focusing on the vision part that how vision language models are changing the future of rag so let's start so few days back uh, or let's say few months back we got, got this paper call belly right now what this paper is about so they are particularly uh, saying that it's a efficient document retrieval with vision language models now they have also released the paper i think the latest version of the paper was on 7th of october 2024 and in this particular paper they have uh, they have proved that how vision language models are actually helping the people to uh, improve the retrieval accuracy as well as increase the overall accuracy of a rack system so let's start so the current process is maybe uh, when you are working with pdfs are maybe you can run a optical uh, character recognition that is simple ocr on scan pdf you can run a document layout uh, detection model you can reconstruct the structure and read the reading of the of the page you can use chunking strategy you can have neural embedding model to map text chunks to semantically meaningful vector space store the vector index to be used for future retrieval so in a box currently what is happening if you have a pdf then you are going to run a pdf parser on it or any third party we parser on it and going to index all the data in a vector database right that is what we are going to do now what they are saying instead of doing this complex retrieval system that rely on ocr document layout parser blah 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 just embed the image simple as that just embed the image now they are also saying it's not as simple as it sounds but it's very efficient now coming to the model architecture they are saying that they are going to do it in two parts the first part is in indexing phase all the documents from the corpus are indexed in an offline fashion in the second part in the querying phase the user queries match with the low latency to the pre computed document index so for the quotient similarity part we currently do it doesn't take that much time but yeah it's one thing so now important requirements for are that they are using good retrieval performance reasonable indexing speeds and low latency during querying these are the three points that they are focusing on so what is the current process you can see this is a pdf you run an ocr let's say and with a layout detection you do all the chunking and uh, embedding and then you get, put it inside the model uh, sorry vector database once you have the query let's say what are we it's you are going to embed that query again and you are going to search using sim uh, quotient similarity score inside the vector database right and you are going to get a particular search result let's say top 10 top 5 top 15 and you are going to pass the query along with the model to the uh, along with the search results to the summarization model and you will get some output right what they are saying the, you you are going to use the pdf in an offline fashion let's say you are going to give it to a vision llm uh, the vision encoder is going to create some projections then you are going to pass it to llm then you will have some projections here and then uh, using that you are going to index it and when you have that query you are again going to use the same llm to index uh, to uh, vectorize it and uh, embed it and then use the similarity score to get some output now the current process takes 7.22 seconds per page this process takes only 0.39 seconds per page plus the best part is it's also more efficient you know it's give, giving better results so during indexing they are using the standard by encoder neural retrieval system first pass document to extract semantically coherent text passages so during query the query is again converted to dense vector and the uh, document passage vectors with biggest quotient similarity can be retrieved okay so now we are going to di like deep dive how things are working here now currently during indexing we they are saying we aim to strip a lot away of complexity by using images of the documents directly extracted so they are using this vision llm which is pali gamma 3 billion now if you guys don't know about this i'll show you yeah this is the one this was released by google in july of 2024 and uh, it's a really good model from what google benchmarked and from what the developers uh, developer community has given a feedback as a 3 billion model is performing really good and you can see 
you can see you can use an image for this and instruct the model to create a caption in spanish so it's a sort of image text model and uh, it's a really good model when it comes to 3 billion uh, as the parameter size because most of the models that are currently working on images and text are of very big size let's say 7 billion is the minimum size that was proposed initially then you have models which are even for 25 billion let's say 28 billion 32 billion right now we also have uh, this Pali Gamma 3 billion then you have other versions of this which are much bigger than this so you encode the image by splitting it into a series of patches right which are then fed to a vision transformer which vision transformer let's see so this is siglip yeah this is also by google siglip so 4 million million patch 14 384 okay why did they use this specific one we will have to deep dive into the paper why this specific one right <laughs> so the, this is a pre-trained model on the web layer resolution at 384 by 384 so this was introduced in a paper sigmoid laws for language image pre-training and wonderful paper i would recommend you guys to definitely go and read it so it's a multi-model obviously uh, and uh, it, you can see text is there then you have the image and uh, the training and everything then that can be done accordingly cool now there's alternate ways to use it so if you go and see the evaluation of siglip compared to the current uh, multi models right because if you see here uh, they have that uh, comparison with clip siglip is a clip multi model now if you don't know about this i would highly recommend you go and read this clip is uh, was the model that was proposed in this particular paper learning transferable visual models from natural language supervision so it's a wonderful paper and it's a state of the art computer vision systems are trained uh, to predict a fixed set of predetermined object categories so this line is more than efficient i think to understand what this paper is going to be about right cool so yeah now when we have this model we are going to use it uh, uh, to you know in the encoding has been done by pali gamma and now which has been fed to siglip cool now these patch embeddings are now linearly projected and inputted as soft tokens to language models that is gemma 2 billion so i think everybody knows about gemma i don't need to open the uh, page on hugging face for this particular model so what is the purpose of this now these patch embeddings that we have are in order to obtain high quality context contextualized patch embeddings in the language modeling model space so now when we have the patch embeddings we want to make it more high quality contextualized patching embeddings into language model space which are then projected to a lower dimension that is dimension 128 for more efficient storage now i know this is getting a bit complex i will take i will take you guys to the part where they're explaining this so yeah here is the part now if you see this have they have the vision language model encouraged by this so to this extent we reintroduce a pali gamma 3 billion extended vision that is capable of generating call bird style multi-vector representation of text and images so you see here we are directly converting the images to text then to embedding something like that right so we are adding a projection layer to map the output language model into embedding to a vector space of reduced dimension of d equals to 128 that we were talking about as used in the Colbert paper so this paper you can definitely use to keep lightweight bag of embedding representation cool so most of the part is done here but what makes it different so they have this concept called uh, late interaction right so they have a code bird like this Colbert style again so if you guys want i'll open this for you uh, okay i got cool so if you go to the paper maybe the link yeah you'll find that efficient and effective passage search via contextualized late interaction over BERT so same concept right that has been used in this paper has been implemented there so they have used the same concept of Colbert where they have you know made the model possible to you know do this efficient passage search right now if you want to go into mathematics I will definitely recommend you go and read this paper uh, because if I start explaining this it is going to take a lot of time so and this is this video is more about this particular paper so I'll, I will brief you guys so given a query that they have Q and document D they are, they are denoting it at the equation here and the respective multi multiple uh, this multi vector representation in the common embedding space that we were talking about here right so they are just doing the nothing more like very complex but it is the sum of all the query vectors that you had of its maximum doc, dot products with each of the ND document embedding vectors right so this is very uh, you know simple to understand if you have a context about what was happening here right so yeah uh, it's it's a you can consider it as a prerequisite for uh, reading this paper right then you have this contra contrastive loss 
the so low, this late interaction operation is fully differentiable they are saying enabling back propagation so it makes sense right because the paper that they are following here we define our batch in constitutive loss as l the soft max cross entropy of positive scores now guys now if, if, if i think most of you already know about this but the, the the purpose of using cross entropy here now now i think most of you will be getting confused that why cross entropy and these things are coming here but try to understand that the way a model is going to represent a word or going to produce something it is very important that the entropy of a model is understood because if you understand if the language is translated in let's say into binary digits right in the most efficient way the entropy is the average number of binary digits that are required for let's say uh, for letter of that particular language cool now perplexity can also play a game for evaluation here i would say but that we will come to the in the next part right now to compute li we have uh, we have talked about this so what they are saying with callbully we thus benefit from fast indexing without significant impacting query latencies but what about the performance so uh, in the in the paper it said they have they have told that how they have done that and if you want to study about the data sets that they have used they have already mentioned it here that uh, what the two kind of data sets that they have used that is one is academic and one is practical tasks so this is for the benchmark design we are coming to that cool so let's talk about the data set the awesome be uh, benchmarks exist to evaluate text embedding models obviously we know about we know about this mteb benchmarking and i think most of you even using it for re ranker benchmark part so while documents often rely on visual elements to more efficiently convey information to human readers text only systems barely tap into this visual cues correct now if you look at this they have academic task and practical tasks so two type of tasks they have made, uh, done, kept so that you the diversity between the actual uh, implementation of a model and just for the sake of benchmarking remains there right now the results results are really cool because if you look they they what they are saying we initialize the vision language model backbone using pre trained weights from pali gamma obviously and randomly initialize the final projection layer as we were talking there now to facilitate training we add low rank adapters to language model attention weights and as well as the linear projection so i think we have talk about this low rank adapters and everything in the in the lora video we were talking about previously so our training data set is composed of query document images pairs that we source from two main streams on one hand we rep uh, we repurpose the visual question answering data sets and use the original questions as our query right so let's go directly to the results i'll directly go to the paper that will make things better so yeah this is the paper and obviously the benchmarks are known benchmarks are known so currently contrastive vlms then structured the currently that are there uh, the i think they could have benchmarked more but it's fine it works so currently the gold pali that uh, gold pali that is has the late <laughs> interaction right is achieving a very good accuracy it's i think 22.2 22.6% higher than the average right because if you see here it was 56.5 the by pali that is with llm and the siglip that is the vanilla siglip by google you see 43.2 then you have fine tuning to it that is 58.5 then again into this thing you have the llm that is you have introduced the gemma model so that is by pali that's 56.5 and then you have call pali with the late interaction right so that is 79.1 now if you see here on the on the most of the benchmarks the doc q info q tap f tat q shift ai so a lot of pdfs and everything are there because if you want to uh, read about this particular benchmark i would recommend you read the paper because most of it is theoretical part nothing much to explain but yeah it's a wonderful benchmark so uh, I, i would recommend you guys to go and read about it why did they use this because i have been working in the field of reg and i particularly think this practical task is what make it different from the other benchmarks this archive ones and everything are quite common right so yeah now this actually you know opens a gate to the people who actually want to explore vision language models as the actual indexer to the rack systems right because as i've been working in this field i can say for sure indexing and search retrieval has been a very big bottleneck when it comes to rack you cannot solely keep training your fine tuning a model and expect that okay everything is going to work no it's not going to work for sure so yeah so yeah cool most of the part i have covered and i would obviously give the link to this paper in the description as usual you guys can go and read it from there and you have this vidor leaderboard the one benchmarking dataset that we were talking about previously in the paper so <laughs> currently a lot of 
but you will see models here i hope one day maybe in the coming days i will be able to put one model here to just see the benchmarking uh, most of the time i usually don't work with vision language models unfortunately but uh, yeah I, i'll i'll see if i can get a chance so you have the average energy healthcare and everything so i think the current one is vidor colquin v0.1 oh that cool looks nice visual retriever based on quen 2 vl2 build oh man the name itself is very complex so yeah this model is sort of same i think they have uh, the vidor is the official owner of this the it they are following this kolpali architecture and everything so yeah this quen 2 is i think really good model so yeah uh, i hope i'll get hands on it very soon so yeah guys that was it from my side i hope you guys uh, learned something new from this video and recommend me what type of topics do you guys want to uh talk about maybe the research topics or the mathematical or let's say theoretical topics that we can discuss on this channel right so thank you and have a nice day